call the meeting to order. Welcome to the December 6, 2017 meeting of the Local Agency Formation Commission, County of Kern, State of California. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Fowler? Here. Commissioner McKibben? Here. Commissioner Sanders? Commissioner Rivera? Here. Commissioner Scrivener? Here. Commissioner Mello? Here. Commissioner McGuire? Commissioner Couch? Here. Commissioner Grola? Present. Thank you, and we'll start off with the Pledge of Allegiance, and I will ask Commissioner Garola if you'd please lead us in the pledge. Please stand. Salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. All right, next item on our agenda is item number three, and that is the request for approval of the minutes of the November 1st, 2017 meeting. Has everybody had a chance to look at them? If so, if we could get a motion to approve. I found an error. Okay, thank you. And it's real hard for me to figure out how Commissioner Sanders could vote when she wasn't here. Okay, um, we will make that correction. Thank you. In addition to that correction, Commissioner Fowler was here and did vote. Okay. I'll Any move. other corrections? I'll move approval with those two changes. Second. You have a motion and second. Please cast your votes. Motion approved. All ayes. Thank you. Okay, next item on our agenda will be public comments. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons desiring to address the commission on any matter not on this agenda and over which the commission has jurisdiction. Do we have any members of the audience like to make a comment on anything that's not on our agenda? Okay, seeing none, then we'll move on to item five, public hearings. This is the um, City of Bakersfield Annexation number 677, Denon number two, Dissolution of County Service Area number 45. Mr. Knox, please start us off. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. For your consideration of this proposed annexation of a parcel subdivision into the city of Bakersfield, the area proposed is approximately 14.4 acres of land consisting of 63 developed residential lots into the city of Bakersfield and to dissolve CSA number 45 from that same area. The proposed area is located north of Panama Lane and west of Highway 99. This area is within the city of Bakersfield's sphere of influence DIN has been planned for the city's general plan and zone for mobile home as it, has, as it is currently used. The proposed annexation size is above the 10 acres and is completely surrounded by the city of Bakersfield. Therefore, there are no disadvantaged unincorporated communities to consider. The area is within CSA 45, which provides street lighting. Since the city of Bakersfield will be providing these lightings, the same service in the area, the county wishes to dissolve CSA 45. If approved, this uh, proposal is subject to conditions recommended by executive officer. The city has prepared a notice of exemption to meet the CEQA requirements. Um, there is no property tax increase uh, for the property owners. There will be no change in zoning. It is consistent with commission policies. There is no ag land conversion. It conforms to the assessor's parcels is consistent with a general plan, regional transportation plan, and specific plan. Uh, it does not uh, address the regional housing needs because this is already completely built out, so there will be no additional housing for, with, uh, associated with this project. Uh, there's no functional overlap with the dissolution of, of CSA 45, that will go away. Uh, this is zoned in the county mobile home subdivision MS and has been pre-zoned mobile home MH by the city of Bakersfield. Uh, it's consistent with commission policies. There is a current MSR uh, the city has and there is an adequate water supply. There are a couple of errors in the report that I would like to correct. In the listing of services provided under the county versus city, water services will continue to be provided by California Water Service as they are now. And streets will be, maintenance will be changed from the county to the city. Annexation does not have 100% landowner consent. Landowners have been contacted several times regarding this annexation application. 
Last year, City Councilman Parlier and Supervisor, or Chairman Scribner, walked this neighborhood and talked to individual property owners. Reports back was there was a favorable response. LAFCO sent notices to all property owners within the proposed boundary and within 300 feet, and voters within the boundary were also noticed. Last week, the City of Bakersfield held a workshop in which I attended. There were approximately 15 to 20 residents who attended, with many who asked questions and received answers from several city departments who were in attendance. This is an annexation of an unincorporated island that is completely surrounded by the City of Bakersfield. The City of Bakersfield has requested that the protest hearing be waived pursuant to Government Code Section 56375.3. This code section states, a commission shall approve after notice and hearing the change of organization or reorganization of a city and waive protest proceedings pursuant to part four commencing with section 57,000 entirely, if all of the following are true. And so I need to read these, read these to you and, and why these, these are true and uh, these do meet the criteria of this code section. The change of organization or reorganization is initiated on or after January 1st, 2000. This was initiated on June 9th of 2017. The change of organization or reorganization is proposed by the resolution adopted by the affected city. The city of Bakersfield has provided us a resolution uh, attached to this application. The subdivision uh, meets all of the following requirements. It does not exceed 150 acres in land and that area constitutes the entire island. This project is approximately 14.40 acres, which is considerably less than 150. The territory constitutes an entire incorporated island located within the city limits of a city or constitutes a reorganization containing a number of individual um, unincorporated islands. The area proposed for annexation is completely surrounded by the city of Bakersfield. So that, that meets that requirement. It is substantially developed or developing. The finding required by this paragraph shall be based upon the one or more factors including but not limited to any of the following factors. A, the availability of public services, utility services. The proposed annexation already has utility services provided. Uh, the presence of public Im improvements, paved streets, street lighting, utilities, and other amendments are already present. The area is currently not served by sewer, but individual properties will be able to hook up to the city's sewer service for a fee. The presence of a physical improvements upon the parcel or parcels within the area. There are mobile homes on each of these developed lots. So it is, uh, there are physical improvements. This area is not uh, prime farmland. Uh, it will benefit from the change. There's a question about whether it'll benefit from the change of organization or reorganization or is receiving benefits from the annexing city. In this case, the city has calculated that trash service fees will be reduced if the area is brought into the city's boundaries. So that's a benefit to the property owners. Not in your, in your packet, uh, but also included, uh, all property owners will also see additional uh, annual savings of approximately $40 as CSA 45 streetlights will be dissolved. The maintenance and operation of the streetlights will be absorbed by the city through existing general fund revenues. Therefore, there's no separate additional charge for this service when the property is annexed into the city. This subdivision does not apply to any unincorporated islands within the city that is gated community which services are currently provided by a community service district. This island annexation neither is gated nor has a CSD. Notwithstanding, this is the last one, notwithstanding any other law, at the option of either the city or the county, a separate property tax transfer agreement may be agreed to between a city and county pursuant to section 99 of the Revenue and Taxation Code regarding the annexation subject to this subdivision without affecting any existing master tax sharing agreements between the city and county. This project uses the master tax agreement between the city of Bakersfield and the county of Kern that's currently in effect. Both have agreed to use that, that tax agreement. The process required by the Cortese Knox Hertzberg Act has been followed, including notices to affected agencies and any notices and publications required by law. We have received no formal comments on this application. 
So it is my recommendation as executive officer for the commission to make a conclusion that this annexation meets all the criteria under government code section 56375.3 that requires this commission to weigh the protest hearing and approve this annexation. Thank you, Mr. Knox. Any questions from the commission before we go to the public? Okay. Uh, not a question particularly, uh, Mr. Chairman, but okay. um, a couple of comments. Um, I understand that LAFCO's done its due diligence and uh, I read the law very carefully and thank you for making us aware of it. Um, however, my problem is with island annexations in general, not necessarily the Denon annexation. And I think whenever government, on whatever level it is, takes away an individual's right for a protest that ha can have impact, that's a very sad situation. And in our country, you know, we fought for our Bill of Rights and our Constitution, and we, we really are supposed to value the opinion of each person. Now, with annexations, uh, state law favors the annexing authority, the cities, Bakersfield, Taft, whatever, by making a typical annexation protest-based. That is, um, you're going to be annexed unless you receive, the, the LAFCO in this case, re receives a certain number of protests, and there's an exquisite kind of balance uh, that's required. Um, however, in those cases, every voter and every property owner has a right to protest by a written protest, and you can find those protests on the LAFCO site on, on the computer, uh, or they can come down and speak here before LAFCO. They can go to the, the annexing city's uh, council meeting and protest. But the only protest that really matters is that written protest, uh, because that alone can stop an annexation. And I, I think that's kind of a screwy way of doing business. I think annexation should be promoted by cities because they offer so much more and people will stream to them, yes, we want in. But the state of California has arranged things differently. Where I really have problems is in the case of the island annexation. Now, with Denon, it is completely surrounded. There's no argument about that. However, from the information in my packet and from what I hear about the door-to-door -door, uh, meetings with residents, it sounds like the city could have done this the regular way and annexed the Denon area without going to the island annexation. So uh, they've met the requirements of the law. They could have done it another way, I believe, and maybe Mr. Esselman could speak to us about that. And I worry about the precedent this sets because Denon is completely surrounded and the law refers to substantially surrounded, and you can't argue that they're anything but substantially surrounded, but going ahead in time, there are going to be neighborhoods uh, that are not completely surrounded, and then the argument will be, what is substantially surrounded? And if the city of Bakersfield or any other city wants to use this island law or the part of cortese knox Hertzberg 1563, a 75.3, um, then I have a problem because that is going to make people's voices be silent. Now, the Denon people or any person in any other annexation can walk up and down Truxton with a protest sign. They can write to their supervisor or their council person to be. They can write a letter to the Californian. They can go door to door and talk to their neighbors. But in annexations, a typical annexation, not island, the only protest they have where their voice really counts is that written protest that's signed a, you know, properly, dated properly, sent to the right people, and counted. And I really object to cities using island annexations because I think it, it shuts up the voice of the people 
it, um, it's setting a precedent for other areas. Um, it uh, takes away self-determination of people who live in neighborhoods. And I regret that. I have misgivings about that. So completely outside of the Denon issue, uh, I'm going to have to vote against this. Uh, now, our executive officer has told us that LAFCO shall approve this, so waive the protest hearing. So I see we've got quite a crowd here. Looks like maybe one or two people who might want to speak on this. And if our commission votes uh, to go along with the recommendation, uh, a well, very well-reasoned recommendation of our executive officer, that gentleman won't have a right to speak. I think that's lousy. I don't like it. And I would like to know that in any further annexation, whatever city we're talking about makes it on their own by being able to count those votes and win a majority and allow the annexation to take place, allowing majority to rule and not some crazy part of that our California legislators have foisted on us. I just don't like it. I'm not comfortable with it. So I'm going to oppose this annexation and thank you for listening. Thank you, Commissioner Fowler. Any other comments from the commission before I go to the public? Okay, seeing none, we'll now open it up to the public. Are there any persons here that would like to make any comment on this item? If so, please come forward. Okay, seeing none, I'll return to the commission. Do I have any commissioner Comments other than Commissioner Fowler's? Yes. I agree, I agree with Commissioner Fowler. I don't like the law. I don't think it's fair to homeowners, but it is the law. Thank we, you, Commissioner Mellon. We just have to find out who was behind it and vote them out. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner. So do we have a motion from the commission? I'll Commissioner move, Couch? I'll move the staff's recommendation. Do we have a second? I'll second that. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Please cast your votes. Motion approved, six ayes, one no. Thank you. That takes us to our next item of business. Let's see, number six, pub public project review. I don't see anything there. Any commission items? Okay, seeing none then, we'll move on to item number eight, general business. Item A is approval of claims list number 17-11. Is a vote required? Motion. A second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Please cast your votes. Motion approved, all ayes. Thank you, and then item B, consideration of the proposed 2018 meeting schedule. Um, I will let you know, I am not going to be here during that week, including January 24th, and so was wondering if we could have that meeting on January 17th, which is the prior Wednesday. Other than that, I don't have any issues with any of the dates. I don't know if any other commissioners have any request to change any of the proposed dates? Okay, see, so you now I guess it's just me. I, I believe the commission would have to approve your change. Okay. I'll move the, uh, the calendar with that chain to January 17th is what I heard. Yes, thank you. Second. second. Okay, you have a motion and a second. Please cast your votes. <clears throat> motion approved, all ayes. Okay, next item is item C, sphere of influence, five-year questionnaire reviews. Mr. Knox, do you have any comments on that item? Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, every five years, a sphere of influence for special districts and cities are required to be reviewed by this LAFCO. This is completed through a questionnaire sent out to each district and city. Uh, when reviewing these spheres of influence, there's a list of items that must be considered by commission approval. This is accomplished with a questionnaire that is sent out to each agency. 
Seven are included in this report. No district has indicated they are expected to modify their sphere of influence in the next five years. I am requesting that your commission adopt the resolution reaffirming these spheres of influence as presented in compliance with government code section 564259. Uh, and those seven are the Arvin Community Service District, Indian Wells Valley Water District, Rosedale Rio Bravo Water Storage District, Tahone Castaic uh, Water District, Enos Lane Public Utilities District, North Kern Water Storage District, and Stallion Springs Community Service District. Uh, we are still have a few outstanding that we're working on, and we'll bring those back to you on January. Um, I'm requesting that this commission adopt this resolution reaffirming these spheres of influences as presented in compliance with government code section 564259. Thank you, Mr. Knox. Are there any comments from the public on this item? Okay, seeing none, uh, staff has made a recommendation. Do we have a motion to that effect? Motion. Second. You have a motion and a second. Please cast your votes. Motion approved. All ayes. Thank you. That takes us to item D, executive officer miscellaneous items. Mr. Knox, please. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. At the last meeting, I mentioned that the audit for the fiscal year 2016-2017 uh, was nearly complete. I received a draft of the audit just hours after this agenda was posted, uh, so I will have it on the January agenda. agenda. Uh, at some point, I will ask if I could put out an RFP uh, to accounting firms in the area for the next grouping of, of audits. I, th I believe our contract with the current uh, accounting firm is, is done, uh, and we've used them for several years, so I think it may be time for a, a fresh look at that. Uh, in October of 2015, we received a application for North River Sanitation District. This is proceeding number 1685, annexation number 105. Uh, at the November or December meeting of 2016, this commission approved a one year extension to give the district additional time to complete a municipal service review. The year has now passed, and we have not received the MSR from the district. As time has run out, the application will be terminated. Um, I have jury duty coming on 1st of January. Just wanna let you know that. Um, originally, it was, they had me in late, late October and at the same time as the Cal AFCO conference. So I moved it up the first week in January. I was thinking that would be a nice, you know, cause there's considerable time between this meeting and the January meeting, but now that you've moved the January meeting up, Hopefully it will not conflict with jury duty. <laughs> um, also wanna let you know that your staff has started logging hours uh, on our pro projects to be used for a fee study. Uh, the policy committee asked that the fee study be done uh, to potentially raise our fees. The fees have not changed in nearly two decades. Uh, I think uh, the current rates are probably out of date. Uh, and need to be changed. So we're, we're gonna be br bring that back. So I wanna let you know that. Um, also last meeting, I'll let you know that I'm on the legislative committee uh, for Cal AFCO. Um, the next meeting is a week from Friday. I was originally planning to go, but I potentially have a conflict with uh, the Weldon, a meeting in Weldon regarding their application um, for a new water district. Um, so I may be going up there to, to deal with, with that. So with that, um, that's the end of, of my miscellaneous items. Um, if you'd like, I'll go into item E, Geographic Information System Workshop. Yes, please do. Okay. This is a continuation of the agenda item from the last commission meeting. Uh, most of us probably wish that we had done the workshop instead of catching the first two innings of game seven. Uh, didn't go as planned. Um, so anyway. Uh, LAFCO has been working with GIS for a number of years to do exhibit maps for the proceedings that come before you. GIS, GIS can, be, can do so much more. We are expanding the use of GIS to help us in the proceedings, uh, the processing of application, bringing consistent, consistency to boundary lines and to provide additional information to this commission to help make informed decisions about the applications you have before this body. GIS will also help streamline the application process so we can provide quicker turnaround on applications. 
We are currently transitioning to a less paper office, not paperless. Uh, we can't get to paperless, but we can, we can definitely lessen the load. Uh, and some items we need wet signatures uh, to make sure that we, we meet our requirements. Over time, we will reduce our paper load and provide our services more effectively. All this is possible because we hired a full-time analyst with an expertise in GIS. Bud Rice has been with us full-time since March, but has been doing our maps since 2009. He's going to walk you through some of the features and tools that uh, each LAFCO, uh, what, that GIS brings to our local LAFCO. Bud? Okay, I'll try to make this as quick as possible. So, uh, okay, I'm going to assume that you don't know much about geographical information systems, and I'm just going to kind of walk you through a little bit about what it is. Uh, GIS is what it's commonly referred to as, is just basically it's a uh, database system that is used uh, where the key element is the spatial aspect of something. So it says it best here, a geographic information system is a system designed to capture, store, manipulate, analyze, manage, and present spatial data. The power of GIS is that it can take a point, a location, and then match it up with other databases and do this on the fly. So modeling, like what you see on the Weather Channel or something like that, this is all GIS, GIS-based. So, and with that, these are some of the areas where GIS is used, uh, sometimes quite extensively. Uh, government is one of them uh, attending the, the Cal G or the GIS conference in Santa, San Diego. There's usually 20 to 30,000 people there. Of course, it's right before Comic-Con, so. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it, it is quite extensive and it is very, very large. So. Okay, now, uh, over the years through LAFCO, what I've seen is the executive officer and the staff has used many different methods to try to reach a, uh, a report and recommendation the best that they possibly can. Now, we didn't always have the tools available that we do now, and so I'm just gonna run through real fast about what we did have available and what we used. Uh, that right there, there are six of these. Uh, these used to be on the walls. They contain each one of the districts. Uh, I say each one, there's actually several districts for each one. These are six feet long, three feet high. I didn't want to bring one to show you. <laughs> They're too awkward. But this gives you kind of a, a idea of the executive officer would go find the, the area and then he would move to other tools in the toolbox. One of them, being this book here. So this is more of a detailed book that gives all the maps that is done up and archived. And then w once he has that, or she has that, the executive officer then utilizes other maps, uh, the farmland security maps, different things to try to pinpoint where these annexations go. So, and then from there it goes to surveyor, assessor, auditor. So all of these people add additional information. One of the fallbacks on this is that, let's say it goes to the assessor, county has a lot of information. The assessor supplies us the information. If there's additional information we need, it's gotta go back to the assessor for reevaluation. So, and sometimes this creates a problem because it could take a couple weeks before we get something back, so. These are something of what we received. This is a legal description and a recent uh, Lost Hills annexation that was approved. So it's things like this that we get. Uh, we learn to plot these along with the maps. We use the maps and the legal descriptions to go ahead and plot them and uh, make sure that everything's done. And before I go into that one, let me just do this. I'm gonna show you a few things on GIS. Will that change over? Can, will that change over? Can you guys see GIS on your? Okay. 
Let me see if I could close this one open. Like that one. Yeah. Okay. All right. I wanted to give you a good GIS presentation. <laughs> He's going to see if he can help me out here. <laughs> it's still connected. Yeah, I could bring up the other items on my screen. And I shut down the PowerPoint completely. There we go. Okay. All right. So basically, once a, a project comes in, we take the application, we start looking at certain things. I use the legal description in the map that we had earlier, and I go ahead and plot it. Once it's plotted, I bring up the county of Kern, and then in this case, like I said, it's the Lost Hills. So I bring that up, start looking at that. This has uh, all the township range sections and the, the corners themselves. I go ahead and plot, uh, so that one comes up right there. Uh, so that's the area that was actually annexed a few months back. And then there's certain things, after it's plotted, there's certain things that we could check. Just like the executive officer had pulled all them different maps before, now with GIS, we could run in and we could check and validate some, a few other things. Uh, the first thing I want to look at is, of course, agriculture. So we bring up, this is farmland mapping and monitoring program. So we go ahead and bring that up. And basically what that tells us there is that the annexation is in a prime farmland. Okay, but it is adjacent to an urban area. That's the pink area that you're looking at. And it is also adjacent to Highway 46. So with all things considered, when you start looking at what uh, the Cortese Knox Hertzberg Act asked for, it says, you know, urban development is going to expand. So we have that one. But we also want to check to see if there's any Williamson Act. We automatically bring that up just at a click. It is out of the Williamson Act for this particular annexation. So agriculture seems to be all right. Uh, we could also look at special districts, and this is where some of the power really comes in for uh, GIS. And so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna grab my information tool, and I turned on all of the sphere of influences for all the district boundaries. And I'm just gonna grab it and just ask the computer what is in that area. So, What comes up is uh, it's part of the public cemetery, number one. It's part of West Side. Of course, it's Lost Hills since that was approved. Uh, West Side Mosquito, Citrus, and Lost Hills Water, along with Bell Ridge Water Storage District. So it automatically gives me kind of a preliminary of what the assessor is going to give me. So it, we could catch any red flags or anything and then go from there. Uh, additionally, I could check DUCs. This is in a DUC according to the Department of Water Resources and uh, community. I could also look at Kern County's general plan. Uh, this annexation was, is in a medium density, lower density, and an ag. And then I could also check to see if there's a specific plan. Now, the, the reason I, I do this and let me start the presentation back over again. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, the PowerPoint that we were looking at earlier, this one here, uh, can you see that one? Okay. Basically what that says is uh, it lists all the different areas that are supposed to be considered. So there are 68 different considerations that, are, that the Kern or the Cortese Knox looks at that the executive officer covers in his report. Out of that, 71% of them can be used in a, some format with GIS. So 21% is documentation, 71 GIS. So you've seen how fast I went through and checked some of these. Just the areas that I checked, just the five areas that I checked would normally take a few hours going with a, a little bit older style. So looking at maps, making sure they're current and everything. Most of the data that we have available through GIS now is coming directly from the source, whether it's from the county, the state. Uh, a lot of times I could hook directly into their internet and then bring that information in. We know it's current. So looking at that information, it's, I think you're starting to see some of the projects go through a little bit faster. And we're trying to utilize this a little bit more and more. So with that, uh, in the future, speaking with the executive officer, we're looking at, we're going to have more digital forms that will integrate with the GIS system, uh, databases and all. We're also looking at uh, websites. Uh, GIS can be an interactive. You uh, probably know about the Kern County GIS system that is interactive. You could turn the layers on and off yourself just to view some of that. We could do that as well through LAFCO. And then the database software itself, the procedures, the designs and schedules, all of that, all of that can be integrated with GIS. So it makes it all inclusive. And that's it. I'm just, I just wanted to make sure that you guys got everything covered. So, so, so I can finish this off. LAFCO has been operating under a basic license through the county uh, for a number of years and also has used Bud's own personal expanded license, which has currently expired. Uh, so we're now back to a basic GIS service. So we can do more with the expanded tools that Bud has demonstrated today. I will be coming back to the commission uh, with a license agreement to update our uh, abilities to streamline our process. Although I'm not sure I can quantify accurately, I believe the use of GIS will reduce the number of errors we see in applications, streamline the process, and over time save the commission money. All right, thank you, Mr. Knox. Any yes. questions or comments from the commission? Okay, seeing none then, um, this was an informational item. The last item on our agenda is closed session, and we have one item to consider in closed session, so I'd entertain a motion to adjourn to closed session. Do you have something else, Mr. Knox, before we do that? We don't adjourn. We actually come back after closed session and make an announcement, if there is an announcement to be made. On the, on the board, we adjourn to closed session when we come back in, so I'm gonna, we're going to adjourn okay. to closed session. Okay. Okay. Motion, do I have a motion to adjourn to closed session? Okay. We are adjourned. We'll be back after the closed session item. Okay, hey, LAFCO is reconvened from closed session. We had in closed session an evaluation of our executive officer, and I'm pleased to say that he received an above standard um, evaluation from the commission, and um, I'd like to request a motion that we increase his salary by 4%. Motion. Sir. We have a motion and a second. Put the, please cast your votes. Motion approved, all ayes. Mr. Knox, congratulations. Thank you for a great year, and uh, we appreciate all the hard work. And um, I guess the last thing to say is Merry Christmas, everybody. And we'll see Merry you. Christmas. Happy New Year. We'll see you next year. Yes. Okay? We are adjourned.